My alarm awakens me and I go through the routine of getting ready for the day. Nikki is already downstairs and after a quick breakfast we both head to school. My class today is a little different from usual. The students sit scattered around the room, but as I walk past them and find a seat, I overhear snippets of conversations in different languages. Like me, they're all foreign to Japan. I settle into a seat at the back of the class, far from the entrance, and gaze out the window while I wait for the professor to enter. Suddenly, the room quiets down. I glance at the door, expecting to see the professor, but a girl with bright blue eyes and blonde hair is there instead. Although she has her hip cocked to the side, she still carries a commanding presence. All eyes are focused on her, but she doesn't even blink at the attention. She scans the room, and when her gaze settles on me, she flashes me an excited grin. I overhear the two guys next to me commenting about her. Who is that girl? She must be new. I would have remembered a hottie like her. I can feel the heat of everyone's glares as she steadily makes her way towards me. Hey, she's coming our way! Could it be? Is she coming to us? Whispers float behind her, but she ignores them and sits in the empty desk beside me. Hey, how's it going? I wait for the other guys to answer, but they whisper to each other instead. Who's that guy? Does she know him? She must. Why else would she search him out? You're right. She's way out of his league. She continues to stare at me, waiting expectantly. Eh, she must be talking to me. Good. And you? Better, now that I've found you. You were looking for me. She merely smirks. Do we know each other? No, but I saw you at the qualifiers. Did. Yeah, I watched you take out those two AIs by yourself. Ah, right. She leans in closer to me and her voice takes on a breathy tinge. You were really impressive. I've never seen anybody's core do that before. Okay. I immediately lean back when she leans in. Why is she getting so close? Yeah, everyone was surprised by my core. So, how did you do it? Before I can answer, the professor walks in. The girl gives me a lingering smile before shifting back into her seat. Good morning, class. Welcome to the Foreign Exchange International Bridging. This class is for those who are new to Japan or would like a stronger understanding of Japanese culture and the history of the Izokaze. That means most of your assignments will require you to leave campus and explore the city. This class should be interesting. It'll be nice to get off campus every once in a while. Now, let's begin. You'll find your first class assignment online. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. The cute girl turns back to me and hands me a torn sheet of paper. Don't lose this, okay? She winks. What is it? It's my number. even know you. Why are you giving me this? She brushes a stray hair from her eyes. I was hoping we could get a chance to continue our earlier conversation. I fold my arms unconvinced. And it'd be nice to get to know someone in the same class, in case we ever have questions. Oh, well, that makes sense. I scribble down my own number and hand it to her. Here. She smiles. Thanks. Call me sometime, okay? She grabs her bag and starts to leave. Wait. She flips her hair and lets her gaze fall back on me. What's your name? Valerie. I'm Hero. I know. She winks at me again and turns away. I watch Valerie's hips sway mesmerizingly as she exits the room, and I'm left wondering what exactly just happened. It's called a stalker. I've never met a girl as bold as her before. And how did she know my name? From the qualifiers? I shake the questions out of my head and collect my things. Did you see that? He didn't even ask for it, but she just gave that guy her number! No way! The two of them crowd me as I pack up. Dude, that was amazing. What was? That chick was all over you! Not 
That's your secret. Huh? I mean, how did you get a girl like that to just give you her number? Yeah, usually we have to ask for it, and that hardly ever works. I shrug and shoulder my bag. You have to be hero. I can't explain why Lunar are just drawn to me. Neither can we. I'm not sure whether I should be offended or not. A few students hover in the doorway, unsure if they should enter the classroom or not. Look, I've got to go. Other people need to use this room. One day, we'll learn your true secret! Good luck. I'll leave before they can say anything else. Now the class is over, I've got some free time. What do I feel like doing? It said what, not who. Why isn't you not an option? Uh, I'll use up. I go to the library to study. I sit down in a secluded desk between the stacks of books. After a couple minutes, I think I hear a muffled thumping, as if someone is trying to quiet their jumping. Following the noise to a nearby stack, I see Mayu bouncing on her toes, trying to reach a book on the top shelf. Her fingers barely graze the ledge of the shelf. She tries a dainty hop, but she still fails to reach the book. As she sighs, she pouts and raises herself to try again. Stifling a laugh, I walk over and easily pull out the book that she needs. Mayu blinks at me as I hand it to her. Oh, thank you! She hugs the book to her chest and stares shyly at the ground. No problem. It seems like you could use some help here. Her cheeks redden as she nods. I take another look at the book she's holding. Hey, is that a Pilony 101 textbook? Yeah. I thought so. I guess you're working on the assignment now. Um, yeah. She gives me a strange look. I only know this because I have to retake Pilony 101. I'm not stalking you or anything. Oh, okay. That's good to know. There's a long pause. Maya refuses to make eye contact with me, and I'm worried it might have scared her when she suddenly speaks. Why do you have to take piloting 101 again? As soon as those words leave her mouth, her eyes grow wide and her blush deepens. I I'm sorry! I didn't mean to be rude! I can't help but grin at her reaction. No, don't worry. It's a normal question. Basically, my credit from CI and Y didn't transfer. Apparently some of the material is different here for the introductory course, but so far everything we've covered has been the same. Oh, I see. Yeah, that said, since I've taken this class before, if you ever need help, feel free to ask me. She smiles. That would be great! We stand in silence again. She seems like she wants to ask me something, but is too shy to say it. I know exactly what she wants to ask me. Yes, Mayu, of course I'll help you. Uh, no, I couldn't ask that of you. Too late. This is going to happen. I walk over to my desk and pat the seat beside me. Mayu hesitates, then smiles and sits beside me. Thanks. As we settle at the desk, I pull out my tablet and Mayu pulls out a spiral notebook. She opens her textbook and flips to the correct page, then opens her notebook to a fresh page. Her pencil at the ready as she begins to read the text. Watch curiously as she meticulously writes her notes in fine print. After a couple of minutes, she looks up and her eyes meet for a second before she looks away. A blush stains her cheeks. Um... Are you writing your notes? Why you seem self-conscious? Oh, um, yeah. Did we flash back to the year 2000? than to type it out. Really? She nods. How'd you get into that habit? I wasn't allowed to have electronics when I was growing up. I can't remember the last time I was without my tablet. How'd you survive? Why you giggles? <laughs> well, it wasn't so bad. 
I think that's where I got my love of books. I wasn't allowed to play games very often, but father always encouraged reading. He said he didn't want me to get distracted from my studies, so that's why I wasn't allowed to have a tablet. It sounds like your father takes your education very seriously. He does. I was in high school when I got my first tablet, but by then I was so used to using a pen and paper that typing out my notes felt unnatural. Well, the one upside to writing all the time is that your handwriting is really neat. I wouldn't be able to read my notes if I wrote everything down. Ah, oh, you giggles. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. I read somewhere once that a person's handwriting can say a lot about them. Oh, really? Well, your characters are all very neat and small. Your strokes are slightly rounded, not angular or spiky. What does that mean? You're an introvert. It means you tend to be more shy and avoid confrontation. You also have a tendency to be more creative. Well, you seem pleased. That actually sounds accurate. The handwriting doesn't lie. Anyway, we should focus on the assignment. Right! She turns back to her text and I return to mine. As I'm reading, I can see Mayu glancing at me out of the corner of my eye. Um... I look up. Uh, well, do, do you think you could explain this passage to me? I grin. Of course. It was the table of contents, as it turns out. I continue to help her until her assignment is complete. Remembering that the team rankings are supposed to be posted this morning, I take out my phone and notice an unread email from the school. The rankings are posted online and can be accessed through the web link. I tap on the link embedded in the email and wait. The page doesn't load. Damn thing still isn't working for me. There's a note at the bottom of the email saying a physical copy of the ranking is posted in the pilot's lounge, so I head there. Upon entering, I notice a crowd of pilots in the opposite wall, in front of the posted rank ranks. They're surrounding a smiling guy with white hair and showering him with praise. I have a feeling of deja vu. Pushing past the crowd, I eagerly check the board and search for my team. My stomach twists into knots. I really don't know what to expect. Once I find their team, I breathe a sigh of relief. Rank 21. That's not bad at all. The pilots beside me are still looking, still talking, and I tune into their conversation. Congratulations on being ranked number one again this year, Akira! Yeah, that's awesome! Thanks, guys. But it's actually my team who deserves the congratulations. They all fought really well. Still, you were a big reason why your team got first rank. I watched the match, and you were amazing out there. Thanks, I appreciate it. Don't you already have a sponsor, too? Yeah. Who is it? It's Eludian Enterprises. I've heard their weapons are pretty cutting edge. Wow, you're so lucky! You basically had a sponsor waiting for you! Before anyone else can reply, a group of girls cut through the crowd to read the rankings. A tall girl with long, dark hair steps forward and squints at the board, then she cheers excitedly. Hey! We made it to the top ten! As she jumps up in excitement, my eyes are drawn to her chest. But I look away before I catch myself staring. Glancing around me, it seems like I wasn't the only guy she distracted. Are you serious, May? One of her teammates pushes past to double-check the post. Of course I'm serious! We're in ninth place! That's not bad at all. Especially considering how long we've actually practiced together. That's true. Akira joins May. Congratulations on your rank, May. Thank you, but I'm sure it means nothing compared to being number one. She flashes him a warm smile, and she rubs her arms, squeezing her chest together in the process. Akira falters for a second, then shakes his head and speaks earnestly. No, you girls are pretty impressive. You're a new team, right? Formed over the summer? May nods. It's not often that a team who hasn't had much chance to practice and learn from each other is able to make top rank. You have every right to be proud. Thanks. That means a lot. You already have sponsors, too? Not yet, but we aren't worried. We've had a few companies reach out to us today. It must be nice not to worry about sponsorship. I think my team and I will go through the SBA to get a sponsor. 
SPA. What's that? I do a quick search on my phone. A website for a student-run association pops up on the school network. Ah, it's the Sponsorship Bridging Association. A student association that pairs sponsorship opportunities with different teams. Sounds simple enough. Then I click on the More Information tab. Why should your team get a sponsor? The SBA prides themselves on pairing appropriate sponsors with Ace Academy teams who have proven their ability in battle. These sponsors fund teams for their repair costs as well as provide them with equipment improvements. This is a mutual relationship that gives benefits both that benefits both the team through equipment costs and repairs, and the sponsor by giving them greater exposure and opportunity to advertise through their teams. I scan through the rest of, of their website, looking for the on-campus location. I should stop by and see if they can help us with the sponsor. Instead of the location, I find the student volunteer list and a name pops out at me. Yuna Misaki. I didn't know she was a part of the SBA. Maybe she'll be willing to help us out. It's a bit loud since those groups of pilots are still talking, so I move to a quiet corner and dial Yuna's number. Hello? Hi, Yuna. It's Hiro. Oh, hi! How are you? My day is about to get a whole lot better. I couldn't be better. Oh? Why is that? Because I'm talking to my favorite SBA rep. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wait, how did you know I was part of the SBA? I saw your name on the volunteer list online. Ah, of course. And a girl named Valerie taught me how to stalk people. I was looking to get our team a sponsor but wasn't sure how. Oh. Then I heard a few students talking about the SBA today and figured I'd check it out. When I saw your name, I just had to ask. I'd be happy to help you find a sponsor. Really? You don't mind? It's no trouble at all. I'll check in with the association in the morning, and I'll be sure to keep you in the loop. Thanks. I appreciate it. Did you need anything else? I don't mean to rush you, but I've got to head out. No, that's all. Okay, then I'll talk to you when I have something. Great. Thanks again for your help. Anytime. See you around. Yeah, see you. The phone clicks as she hangs up. At least we're one step closer to getting a sponsor. I hope. I glance at the time. It's still early in the evening. What should I do? This might be why you couldn't talk to Yuna earlier. Choices, choices. I punch in Nikki's phone number and wait for her to answer. Hey, what's up? Hi, Nikki. I'm pretty much done here, so I was checking to see if you need a ride home. I know Kaido's out again, so maybe we can do something fun. Go to a movie. Wouldn't you rather go with your girlfriend? I don't have a girlfriend. Nikki laughs. <laughs> I wouldn't say that so loudly. I glance at the students walking past giving me strange looks. Oops. Anyway, I guess you'll be seeing that movie alone because I already made plans with my friends tonight. Alright, see you later then. Have fun. I'll see if anybody else is free. Sounds like a plan. Bye! Bye. The line goes dead as Nikki hangs up. With a shrug, I think about who else I can call. I really don't want to know what she's up to, in case you're wondering. I feel like doing something active, but I don't just want to lift weights. I've heard the recreation center always has lots of activities going on. There's bound to be something there I can do. As I walk in, the first thing I notice is how much natural light shines into the room. The facility is huge, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. There are signs leading to the different gymnasiums, and even a pool. There's a locker room nearby, and I take advantage of the facility to change into my gym clothes. As I continue to explore, I spot tennis courts filled with people playing... filled with students playing matches. A few students crowd the sidelines, waiting for a court to be open. Yuna is among them. She's staying alone, stretching out her arms. I head over and greet her. Hey, Yuna. Hi! She seems surprised. I didn't expect to see you here. I didn't expect to be here, to be honest. She chuckles. So, 
You play tennis. A little, just for fun. Do you play? No, I've never had much time for sports. Schoolwork takes priority. Yuna nods in understanding. That and the whole gear thing. But it is nice to do something different once in a while. Of course! So, have you been waiting long for a court to free up? Not too long. Plus, I'm next on the wait list. So once the court opens up, I'll be able to play. Who are you playing against? She shrugs. Anyone who's available. How about you and I play a game, then? She suddenly seems shy. Sure, but I have to warn you, I'm a bit rusty. I haven't played much this season. We'll be evenly matched, then. That's okay, since I haven't really played. This'll be fun! I can't play with new equipment, though. Is there somewhere I can borrow a racket? I actually have an extra you can use. Great, thanks. A court opens up, and you and I take our place on opposite sides. Since you're feeling a little anxious, why don't you serve first? Oh no, that's okay! Please, I insist. She smiles her thanks and nods. As we settle into place, I give my racket a few experimental swings. Once ready, I nod. Yuna tosses the ball into the air and pulls back her arm. With a resounding crack, her racket connects with the ball in a powerful serve. The ball whizzes towards me at lightning speed. Return. <laughs> I barely managed to clip the ball. It lobs over the net but veers out of bounds. What the heck was that? I'm sorry. She's hustling me. I glance at Yuna's worried face and snap out of my daze. It's fine. I wasn't expecting that, but I'll be expecting your next one. She smiles, then prepares for her next serve. Fifteen love. She loves me that much, apparently. She bounces the ball a few times, preparing herself before the serve. Then she throws it overhead. Her next serve is just as powerful. The ball zooms towards me. I catch it with the tip of my racket. The ball flies radically but makes it over the net. Yuna smoothly parries it back. The longer we play, the more I'm able to keep up the volley. Yuna's face is set deep in concentration, but she easily counters my hits every time the ball flies over the net. If this is how she plays and she's out of practice, then I'm not sure I'm ready to face her at peak. Still, the game is over before I know it. I couldn't compare it to her, and she won 6-2. That was a good game! You did really well! You're being too kind. That was clearly a one-sided game. I'm not sure I believe that you're out of practice. You're amazing out there. Nina's cheeks are flushed from both the match and from embarrassment. <laughs> Thank you, but I really don't deserve such praise. You have nothing to be embarrassed about. Even at your worst, you're still better than me. That's not true. Are you part of the school league? She shakes her head no. You should really consider trying out. Do you think so? Definitely. She seems pleased, but shrugs. Thanks, but I'm not sure I have time for that kind of commitment. Hey, are you guys finished? We turn and face a pair of students walking onto the court. Oh, yes, we just finished. Actually, we were wondering if you two would be interested in a doubles match. Doubles match? You and I glance at each other and both break into grins. Sounds like fun! Let's do it. Great. You guys can serve first. Good luck. I retrieve the ball and toss it to Yuna. She catches it and preps to serve. I don't think these two know what they're in for. When I get home, Uncle Kaito is lounging on the couch with his feet up on the coffee table and staring intently at his laptop. Mounts of papers and folders surround him with a few loose pieces strewn across the floor. Hey, Uncle, is Nikki home? Clearly startled, Kaito spins to face me and loses the rest of his papers in a scattered mess. He rubs at his eyes before laying out a resigned sigh and kneels to pick them up. I bend down to help. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. It's not your fault. Sometimes this house can be too quiet. Quiet? I guess that means Nikki isn't home. He gives me a weak smile. I can tell he's tired. Kaito's been working late almost every night since Nikki and I arrived. I hope he's not overworking himself. I hand back all the papers I collect and he begins sorting them in folders again. Can I help? He hesitates and shakes his head. Thanks, bud. But I've got it. 
I sit beside him anyway? What are you working on? Just some work stuff. Right. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't really know what Uncle Kaido does for a living. What kind of work stuff? A lot of things. <laughs> I knew it. He's a secret agent. Ah, I see. See what? Don't worry. I'll keep your secret safe. What secret? I'm just looking over our contracts right now for the restaurant. I knowingly tap my nose. Hmm. Contracts. For the restaurant. I know he means secret information for the government. Kaito gives me a weird look. Yeah. Contracts for the restaurant. I get you. Although, that being said... Contracts? Don't you have a department that handles those? Yeah, we do. But as regional manager, I have to look at them first to make sure they include everything we discuss. Then I send it to the deal desk to make sure all the legalese is correct and that there are no hidden clauses. He pats the pile of papers closest to him. We're opening up a new cafe in the next month, hence all the new contracts. Oh, really? Yeah. Actually, it won't be too far away. You know that empty lot in the strip mall? The one that's been under construction? Yep. That's where it'll be. That's pretty close. I'll have to stop by after it opens and check it out. Have you been to any of our other restaurants yet? I didn't even know you managed restaurants until now. I didn't know you had restaurants. Really? When you were little, I used to take you there when you visited. Don't you remember? Kind of, but I didn't know those were your restaurants. I used to bring you food straight from the kitchen. I was five. I thought everyone did that. He laughs. <laughs> Fair point. Well, if you get the chance, you should try the place near the park. It serves Western-style cuisine and is very popular in Isokaze. I know it won't be exactly like the food you had back in the States, but I'd be curious to see how you like it. Sure, that sounds great. He grins at me before taking... before turning back to his stack. I should probably let him work. I'm going to go upstairs. Good luck with all of this. Thanks! I head to my room and do another quick search on the SBA. Then decide to check out whether clubs are at Ace. Looks like there's a club for everything. Tennis, cooking, business, culture, etc. I wonder if there's an occult club. At some point, I vaguely hear voices downstairs. Nikki must be home. After a quick convo, she comes upstairs and I hear her shut the door to her room. I continue surfing the net, but after a while my eyelids start to droop, and I crawl into bed before drifting to sleep. <laughs> 